Can you still use Canva for your print-on-demand merchandise and book covers like Amazon KDP? The answer is yes. So if you only click this video for that answer, you don't need to stick around. But if you want more details, including the drama that took place over Easter weekend and the communication that I personally had with Canva that led to this video, then go ahead and keep on watching. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And as someone who uses Canva for literally everything, from my various social media accounts, presentations, my various print-on-demand businesses, and my work with Printify, who is one of the largest print-on-demand services in the world, I felt obligated to make this video. Let me start by saying that everything that I share in today's video is based on factual events, statements by Canva group moderators, Canvas policies, content licensing agreements, and Canva support. So no matter what you've heard from other YouTubers who have posted their hair trigger speculation about what they think Canva's policies mean, today we are only focusing on the facts. On April 8th, a moderator from Canva's official design community on Facebook posted a series of infographics that outlined Canva's licensing policies and prohibited uses. The uproar took place after community members noticed this slide, which outlines what can't be sold using Canva's designs. The very first item on this list stated that print-on-demand items and merchandise created with any of Canva's content could not be sold. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up now. Under Canva's official content licensing page within the section titled, can I legally sell the designs I create on Canva? They say, yes, you can legally sell your designs on printed merchandise like t-shirts, posters, stickers, tote bags, and the like, as long as you stick to their permitted uses. More on that in a moment. They do say that it is never okay to sell Canva content on a standalone basis, which basically means that you can't go into Canva's library, stick a single element on a shirt and start selling it. You have to combine that element element with other elements or fonts to create something that is unique and original. Many of you who are in the Canva design group saw how hard I grilled this moderator for answers, and behind the scenes, I had also been emailing Canva support directly, who confirmed that you can definitely print designs on products for selling using free and or pro content as long as you incorporate and combine multiple elements. When I posted a screenshot of this email to show the group moderator, she told me that Canva's website terms take legal precedence over what support shares. Which Okay, fair enough. But later in the thread, another group member specifically asked the moderator if they worked for Canva, and she confirmed that she is not employed by Canva. So obviously we should all be super mad about this, right? Tons of sellers removed designs, deleted listings with high listing quality scores, and even canceled their Canva Pro memberships, all due to this post. Sure, it's totally valid to feel upset by this, but I can understand where this moderator may have been confused and why she believed that she was sharing correct information. Her big biggest argument was that whoever is printing your files, in this case your POD service, will have access to them and that you have no control over what is done with them, basically implying that POD staff or services like Printify and Printful could steal your raw files and use them. This was referenced under section 9.10 of Canva's prohibited uses section, which states that you cannot incorporate the content in any product that results in a redistribution or reuse of the content or is otherwise made available in a manner such that a person can extract or access or reproduce the content as an electronic file. So I completely understand how this could have been seen as a gray area in Canvas terms. However, the odds are so unrealistic that it seems silly to even acknowledge them. And I pointed out that this is a nonsensical and completely hypothetical situation that would directly violate any legitimate POD services terms. Now, this argument went on and on for several days with lots of people chiming in to share their thoughts. And I don't feel like it's really necessary to cover every single thing that was said, since ultimately it doesn't contribute at all to the end result. But I did want to outline why all of this happened in the first place, since so many YouTubers jumped the gun on Easter weekend and created videos advising sellers to quit Canva and remove all of their sellable designs. The most important thing to know is that on Monday morning, a Canva employee had deleted the post and made an announcement that misinformation had been posted over the weekend, and assured sellers that Canva's policies would be updated to ensure that they were more clear. On April 14th, the updated policies were posted under the article titled Guide to Using Canva to Create Digital and Physical Products for Sale, which of course you can find in the links down below. So here is the quick and dirty version of Canvas policies for print on demand, digital files, and things like book covers for Amazon KDP. For a more detailed version of these policies, definitely take time to read the full article in the video description. 
first. If you wanna create a product that you can sell, whether it's a t-shirt, an ebook, or a template, it needs to be an original design. This means using our content with a combination of design elements to create a new creative work. For example, you can create a t-shirt design that uses a mixture of graphics and fonts, but you can't just take a graphic from their library and put it on a t-shirt and sell it as is. If you want to create and sell templates that include pro content, you can only sell these as Canva template links. You cannot sell a template as a PDF or other file type, whether flattened or not. Second, you can use Canva designs to sell products such as eBooks, magazines, templates, posters, mugs, t-shirts, stickers, and other printed products, including those from POD services such as Printify and Printful. It's also important to note that some third-party print-on-demand services may require you to agree that you own the copyright in any design that you upload to their service. If this is the case, you cannot use Canva content in those designs because you do not own the copyright in that content. You only have the license to it. So for your POD service, you want to look for the word rights versus copyrights. Printify states that in accordance with our intellectual property policy, you may only use images that you own or have the rights to use. You have the rights to use Canva designs, which means that Printify is safe to use for POD. Printful states that you need to either own the content that you submit to Printful or have the rights to use, display, and resell it. Again, you have the rights to use Canva designs, which means that Printful is safe to use. If you use a different POD service, just be sure to check out their terms or message their support. Remember, you have the the right to use, but you do not own the copyright. Lastly, Canva states that you cannot use free or pro content to design and sell your own stock content, such as clip art. This may also be important to note for those of you who sell things like Twitch emotes. The full policy update contains a lot of specific scenarios, especially for templates and digital product files. So it's absolutely essential that you read through the full article if you fall into these categories to ensure that you're not breaking any of Canva's terms. In short, it's totally fine to use Canva for POD, KDP, and digital products to sell as long as you're being creative with the content that you design and you're following the newly outlined terms that Canva has added. This is one of those moments when we really need to remember that anyone can say anything on the internet and that sometimes misinformation can be unintentionally spread, even if the original intentions were good. Even though I was in the middle of this Canva drama, I purposefully delayed this video in order to ensure that I had all of the facts ready to be presented rather than sensationalizing on fear. And while it can be super scary when you suspect that you've been breaking a rule or policy, especially when it comes to your business, it's important to ask yourself, who is this information coming from? Can it be verified? Is it subjective? And is there an official source that I can reach out to for clarification, such as a staff member? That's it for the Canva details, but while I have you, I wanted to share something cool that I'll be attending this week that may be of interest to some of you. And no, this isn't an ad, and I'm actually not being paid to recommend it. I know, big shocker, right? But for those of you who struggle with shooting great product photos like I do, my friend and photography coach, Christina Nicole, is hosting a five-day natural light photography challenge. And I'm especially excited about it because it's only $37, and it's designed to help creative businesses diagnose common lighting issues issues when it comes to product photography, such as shadows, discoloration, and poor lighting due to things like seasons and weather. I'm personally taking this challenge because working with natural light has never been a strong suit of mine. So if this sounds like something that you may be interested in checking out, I'll leave the link up here and down below. Registration for that will be ending this Sunday night though. Overall, success in business sometimes means taking speculative information that you hear online and verifying it right from the source. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a weird tattooed Etsy coach, you'll be well on your way to business success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.